So the studio space, it's really coming together. I just need to add some furniture. I already have it planned out. I'm gonna get like this almost like cloud looking, super cozy couch. And then we're gonna have like a coffee table. I'm gonna add another one of those Grove made wall shelves to that wall. What's up everyone, Jossie here. And in today's video, we're pretty much gonna be talking about my experience using the base model 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And this is from more of a developer's perspective, but if you're someone who is both technical and creative, I think this video can benefit you. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It definitely helps out with the algorithm and it also lets me know whether or not you all like seeing me make content like this. And also don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can know right away when I release a video. So I've worked as a front end software engineer for I'd say probably like the past like three years. So out of my five year career, I'd say 60 to 70% of that time was specifically being a front end software engineer. And then the last like 30%, I was like a full stack developer my first like year out of college. And then now I'm working as a developer relations engineer. Also remember when I used to really be so frustrated with trying to do video editing with the MacBook Pros with the Intel chips. And I just feel like my perspective has changed significantly the past year using the M1 chip with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So in this video, my goal isn't to bore you when it comes to like specs and getting really deep into the technical aspects of my experience, but more so to talk about my overall experience using the 16 inch base model N1 MacBook Pro in the best colorway, space gray, past year and how much it's impacted my overall workflow as a content creator or you could even say business owner. I have to do a lot of like administrative work, but also my experiences as a software engineer using my M1 MacBook Pro for my own pet projects and also using it as my main machine for my nine to five. Typing is really important if you find yourself using a computer for long hours at a time and especially if you're a developer. I'll never forget freshman year, I was in the computer lab. This was like the first semester, it was my first programming course. And I remember a professor came over to me and he said that I need to stop looking down at my keyboard and need to type faster, really in order to be successful in this major. I've absolutely loved my experience with the M1 Pro's keyboard. Removing the touch bar and re-adding the function keys has made this laptop more practical and improves the keyboard experience. I will say, I prefer the keyboard to be surrounded by the same color as a laptop instead of the black anodized aluminum inset to make the keys stand out a bit more. Despite that, I find that the keycaps feel natural on my fingertips and the distance between each key is wide enough for me to type effectively without fat fingering too much, which is a very underrated feature, especially when it comes to driving while pair programming. You could say I'm a bit biased when it comes to beefier laptops because programmers, we tend to prefer beefier laptops. So when it comes to the size, I don't have any complaints. And I also understand that if the laptop was lighter or thinner, I'd probably experience overheating and throttling like the previous versions of this laptop. I haven't experienced any throttling or overheating and my laptop stays very quiet and around room temperature. This is by far the best display I've used and I've enjoyed every minute of using my 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro as my work laptop, especially when I had to remote into my work machine. The 16.2 inch liquid retina XDR display with 1000 nits of brightness made me more effective while developing or designing when away from my ultra wide monitor. I often had to demo new features and showcase the responsiveness of the UI we built with React to our stakeholders and the size and brightness of the display gave me more confidence while demoing. I often couldn't use my UltraWide for responsive web development testing or demoing because the monitor size was too big for demoing and found that my breakpoints would be inaccurate. The camera could be better, but 1080p HD is good enough to use for FaceTime and when hopping on Zoom calls for work. 
When it comes to programming from a full stack and web development perspective, which most developers are, I think the M1 Pro base model 16 inch has more than enough power. When coding and designing, you mostly use Chrome and an integrated dev environment. So those applications don't require much computing power. However, compiling time is where the power is needed to perform. So if you plan on using this laptop for enterprise development or working collaboratively through version control and you're constantly building and compiling thousands of packages, folders, you definitely wanna have at least 16 gigs of RAM. I have noticed my base model does struggle to scrub through my 4K 10-bit A7S 3 footage from time to time. And I noticed when exporting my YouTube videos in Premiere, my laptop can be a bit slow and it can be difficult to multitask. In terms of battery life, I'd say if I'm using my laptop off and on through the day, I can definitely get two work days of battery life. So I think the 14 hours as advertised is what you should expect. The speakers, they're incredible. And I noticed that I don't even need to use my audio engine speakers because of how rich the high fidelity six speaker sound system quality is. I have no problem consuming content. I actually love using my laptop to watch YouTube videos or movies. The combo of the Liquid Retina display and support for Adobe Atmos has really made my content consumption a great experience. So would I recommend this laptop to a developer? I think you know the answer to this question. It's definitely a yes. For one, I definitely think you should go with the 16 inch because of the display, especially if you're someone who does both design and development or remotes into work using your personal computer. You'll thank yourself when debugging your code 20 minutes before you demo. If you plan on doing video editing as well, I think this laptop is powerful enough and also consider using Final Cut Pro instead of Premiere. Final Cut was created by Apple. It's definitely the more optimal video editing service dedicated for Macs. So that concludes my one year review of using the 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro as a content creator and software engineer. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who you think might benefit from watching it. Also, don't forget to comment. I love interacting with you all. And as always, have a wonderful, blessed rest of your week. I'll see you all soon. Peace.